Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. It's Monday night and time for our weekly Q&A. Um, this week, I am planning on talking about meal planning and freezer cooking and anything that runs those gamuts, but I'm always happy with whatever your questions are as well. So if you want to talk couponing, CVS, you know, I'm kind of used to all the questions, so bring whatever you have. If you are new and you've never joined us, you will just put your questions directly in um, the comments next to the video, below the video, depending on where you're watching, and um, I will answer them. So between myself or my husband, we're both in the comments, and hopefully we will catch it. Um, though I will say you're, I might be a couple minutes behind tonight because we are like, we were just coming in um, very last minute from our troop meeting. So we always have the fun part of making Monday nights work when it's back to school time and we're back into all of our activities. So my husband is currently putting people in bed. Um, so he will join me in the comments in a minute. But um, that's our plan for tonight. So I'm going to try to keep up with the comments until he gets on. And thanks for those of you who are waiting as I was uh, a few minutes late for sure. Um, but you know, that's just life. It's how things work out. So to start with a question, Amanda says, I haven't been seeing good Coke 12 pack deals, mainly Pepsi. Any reason for that? So Amanda, really the Pepsi deals that we're seeing are actually kind of rare. The fact that we've got all these Pepsi Ibotas and um, Pepsi Target cartwheel offers, what it's more is that soda follows sales cycles around events. Um, so we saw some sales right as football season was kicking off and then we see sales um, for soda around like the Super Bowl and other big events, but super, super cheap soda isn't as common as we would like it to be. Uh, we will always see the buy one, get one deals or um, the buy two, get two deals. And those just rotate between Coke and Pepsi, depending on your store. Um, but the coupons that go along with them, that's definitely a rare one. So uh, I'm with you. We are not a Pepsi family. Sorry, uh, but my husband's from Georgia, so you got to be a Coke family if you grew up in Georgia. Um, and we just have to hang and, and wait for our deals, but they are not as common, definitely, as we're seeing all the Pepsi ones right now. Uh, and Jamie Lynn, you're asking if we're in line for a hurricane. Hopefully not for us. It looks like it's going more to the north. Um, we are in South Carolina. We are not near the coast. So I'm in Columbia, which is the dead center of South Carolina. We are probably looking at losing some power, as most of South Carolina is. And for folks in North Carolina, um, we will be praying for y'all because they are going to get the brunt of all of the wind and all of the rain, it looks like. But we are going to be okay. Um, so along those lines, I even wanted to talk about that tonight because as we talk about freezer cooking and meal planning, um, it's only so good. And when you lose power, what's going to happen? So, um, you know, one little tip to jump in off of that hurricane part in terms of getting prepared um, for a hurricane or for possible power outages. One of the best things that you can do is to prepare your freezer. And folks don't think about this, but if you have I'm kind of looking around what's what's in me, uh, what's with me in the kitchen, but if you've got extra, you know, empty milk, milk cartons or juice jugs and you finish them and they're in your recycling bin, you need to go through your recycling bin right now. Even folks in Georgia, I mean, there's the potential that a chunk of folks could lose power this week, uh, you know, along the eastern seaboard. It does not hurt to do this. So go through your recycling bin. Um, let's rinse them out at least and fill them with water. We are not going to drink this water. I mean, unless you really, really needed to, but you probably want to boil it first. What you're going to do, fill these containers with water, leave a little bit of head space to, uh, because water is going to expand, but we're going to put these in the freezer. Uh, let them have a day, two heads up before the storm gets here. And basically any empty space in your freezer. So if I'm looking at the shelf in the freezer and I've got this little corner over here and I can shove a milk jug in there or I can shove a juice bottle in there filled with water today, it can freeze. You are kind of insulating your freezer with extra ice. It's like you're getting a cooler and you're putting extra ice in your cooler. So go ahead and do that. Not only are you making your freezer more efficient long term, um, because anywhere that there's ice, anywhere that there's not dead space, um, but there's something cold is less work for your freezer. So, you know, that's just long term benefit, but you're really setting your freezer up to last longer 
once the power is out. So uh, slightly on topic, slightly off topic, but um, very timely as so many of us, you know, are preparing for a storm uh, and possible power outages. All along those same notes, uh, in my area, I know, and you know, I just mentioned we're probably not going to get any of the storm, but there's already no bread and um, no milk. I don't even know why you buy milk, guys, because you can't keep it cold once you lose power. Um, but water is gone too. Guys, you know, boil water. Fill your bathtub with water that you can boil. There's so many ways that you could be saving water now to where I'm not really in this dire pinch that there aren't any bottles of water left in the grocery store. Okay, um, so <laughs> yes, Vivian, we're in the kitchen. That was kind of, you know, just to go with the theme. I'm not actually going to be able to cook uh, because I actually have the computer sitting on the stove and that would not be a good idea. Um, but it's timely for talking about meal planning and um, freezer cooking. So that's what I want to dive into. Um, and we'll jump back to questions in just a second. So I see yours, Erin. Um, but uh, on extra care bucks, but I'll get there. I want to get a little bit into meal planning and freezer cooking before we jump into some other questions too. So first off, before we even dive into uh, beginning to freezer plan or meal plan, you need to do a little bit of prep um, when you're shopping. So the first things you need to be looking for when you're shopping, um, we've, we see them buy one, get one all the time. So it needs to be on your list. It was in my big Publix purchase a few weeks ago. Uh, anytime you see your foil pans. Now, I can freezer cook in a normal like glass or metal baking dish, but if it ends up sitting in my freezer for a month before I eat it, I can't cook in that baking dish. It's, it's sitting in the freezer. So these are going to be much easier for you because it's not taking up your normal cooking dishes, um, baking dishes, to keep a meal a little bit longer in the freezer. The other perk for this is that you know, long term, if you get in the habit of making extra meals and you want to give a meal away, someone in the church needs something or somebody in the community needs something, you're not going to be sad. They don't have to give you this dish back. So uh, and it just all around makes life easier. So grab some of these. And the other thing that I would recommend um, is actually Ziploc containers. So grabbing your containers. These are perfect to make freezer meals in or possibly freezer meals that I still need to cook. It's just all the ingredients together already in the freezer so that I'm going to dump this straight into the crock pot uh, and I'm good to go. So these are, this is kind of your homework as you ponder um, adding freezer, freezer cooking into your plan that you're prepared to do that. So Ziploc containers and aluminum foil. Um, I always go for the cake pan size because we're a big family. So if I'm going to make a casserole, I need it to feed us all. But you could definitely cut this in half with the tiny square pans that they sell and put even more in the freezer if you are a small family. You know, if we're talking about a normal recipe for uh, shepherd's pie, two of those small pans would equal the ingredients for one recipe. So if you're, you know, if it's just you and your husband or you and your husband and small kids, that would be even easier to be able to put up little meals in those smaller pans. But you just got to think about what size family you're cooking for. And you already know that. Okay, so that's our homework in terms of being prepped. One other thing uh, is vacuum sealers. And I, I didn't check, but we, we have had um, a coupon for $20 off of Food Saver. I didn't check before I hopped on whether or not that coupon is still there, but I'm pretty sure it is. So if you don't have a vacuum sealer, um, this is in the coupon database on Southern Savers. Uh, and print it out and you can head to the store and use it anywhere. But best deal right now, because it's not on sale anywhere, is to head to Bed Bath & Beyond with that coupon. Use a 20% off Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. Use the $20 off manufacturer's coupon and you're going to have a pretty good deal. But vacuum sealers, uh, and the, this is a roll of vacuum seal bags. This is what we tend to use. I don't, I don't buy the individual pre-made bags. Uh, it's just much cheaper to go with a no-name roll. Um, but having this is going to be handy because if I want to put something in the freezer past six weeks, it needs to be vacuum sealed. It can't be in a Ziploc bag. Um, the Ziploc container can maybe hold it if we're talking ingredients and not cooked, but you're still going to cook it later. But this can still get freezer burnt um, and you're still going to struggle with that. So vacuum sealer, I am not going to struggle with freezer burn. Uh, really out to the like three month, four month mark, your food's going to be fine. We even take it further than that sometimes. Um, now, sometimes we take it a little too far. 
My husband went digging for some nuts this week since he's trying to do keto and he was kind of starving for something that was on his diet for a snack. And he came back in from the freezer with a bag of pecans that technically said to use by 2009. Um, that is not the goal when we put something in the freezer. So our goal is definitely to try to use it in the next six months. Um, but, you know, sometimes things get lost in the back of the freezer. And I, I'm going to blame it on that one. Um, I definitely did not purchase them anytime soon. So they've been in there a while. But long term... We're looking at this for maybe a six month stay max in your freezer, but that's going to be a vacuum sealer. And I know for some of you, this is more of a purchase that's going to be in the future. It's not something that I can just walk out tomorrow. You know, even with those two coupons at Bed Bath & Beyond, you're still going to be paying like 70 bucks or so for that vacuum sealer. So um, you don't have to have it this second. It's just going to help you out a lot. Um, so uh, as for meals, so let's talk meal planning first and then some freezer cooking to go along with that meal planning. Um, and I, I am a big proponent of the fact that we're going to start freezer cooking really small. So as you think about your meal plan uh, or even start to get in the idea that we're going to have a meal plan, maybe you've never done that and we're willing to uh, attempt it for a week or two, I would encourage you one night a week to think about a meal that we could double. So maybe it is that we're going to make a baked ziti and we could double it, or we're going to do a shepherd's pie, a pot pie. Um, we, we do um, poppy seed chicken casserole. Anytime it's a casserole, odds are it is going to be something that I could easily stick in the freezer. But those are great nights to just start the process. Let's double this recipe and get, a ne get one in the freezer. So we're not sitting down and we're making 42 meals today. We don't have to tackle freezer cooking quite that extreme on the, the beginning parts of, you know, getting started just one meal a week and you're tucking it away for a future week. And you, if you did that every week, that right there would be pretty sweet to have, you know, four or five meals after a little bit of a little bit of time tucked away in the freezer. You are not going to complain. But in general, meal planning this week, we want to get started. You've never done it before. Um, if you are not shopping based on what is on sale. So you don't have a stockpile already already in the pantry. You've not been doing kind of the way that I would recommend that you shop yet. You haven't gotten there. Then you're going to need to meal plan based off of what is on sale right now in the grocery store. Um, because if I look at cookbooks, if you're a cookbook meal planner, it's going to get really, really pricey. Uh, you're basically going to come up with an amazing sounding meal plan, but nothing is going to be on sale. And that's not really where we want to be. So I want you to look at what is on sale and then let's start to put that into a meal plan. I would also recommend the first few weeks as hopefully you're buying things that are on sale, you're starting to build a little bit of a stockpile or pantry um, that you're also, I would recommend focusing on very simple meals. So let's not look at things that call for some crazy ingredient that you're not going to use again, or we're going to use every five months. Uh, let's work on some kind of staple meals that we know folks love that hopefully we've got some ingredients for already so that it's less that we're having to grab that might not be on sale today. So that's kind of just key tips for getting started. Uh, another key tip for getting started is some families, one of the reasons that they choose to not meal plan is that they panic that um, when they get home, they're not going to want to have that for dinner. That was our excuse for a long time and why we didn't meal plan. Um, because it, a lot of what we cooked would kind of be on the whim of what we were wanting that night. So if that is your concern or your family's concern, maybe meal plan out seven meals, but don't assign them to a night. Say, okay, I'm going to work to make sure that I have the ingredients for these seven meals this week, um, but we can eat them any night of the week. So we just put them in a list on the fridge and we can cross them off once we've eaten them. But maybe that'll take away a little bit of the feeling hemmed in that you have to eat something on Monday because it is on the Monday schedule. Um, so we map things out by day, but it's pretty common that those days will get flip-flopped or that I'll forget that we have a cross-country practice or something. And so you put a meal there, but it never got eaten, then we're going to eat it, uh, you know, a different night. So it happens to everybody, whether we assign them a day or we don't, uh, you still have to have a little flexibility in your schedule uh, for sure. So as you kind of 
um, dive in uh, to figuring out what that first meal plan week is going to look like. Um, there are a few websites that you can use, and I've mentioned these in the past um, when we've talked meal plans. Um, but one in particular that I really like, and I can pull this one up and show you guys how it works, um, is Supercook. So as you use Supercook, it's very basic. Um, it's not, there's nothing kind of uh, intense about it, but you can put in um, the ingredients. And what I would recommend here, if you're first getting started, is that we actually put in the ingredients that are on sale. So if I wanted to, I can come in and say, uh, you know what, let's look at the meat. I know what meat is on sale in Publix this week. Um, let's actually work ahead because I just finished the Publix ad uh, over the weekend, so I have it all in my head uh, already. So we've got um, steak is on sale. We have um, chicken breast is always on sale. Ground beef is, but it's kind of expensive. I would have bought it last week and not this coming week. Um, beef roast is also on sale. And shrimp is on sale if we want to add in shrimp. You know, I'm hoping really for most of you, you already have this in your freezer. But um, it's, it gives you an idea. Oh, shrimp is in its own list. I should have known that. Um, so we'll see whether, would you put shrimp under seafood or fish? We're going to put it under seafood, I guess. Okay, so shrimp is on sale. So we put in all our meat. And right now we're down to a whopping 38 thousand meals that we could cook with that. You can keep filling this in if you want, but sometimes this is just enough to get some ideas. That's all we're trying to do. Just give me some ideas of what I can cook. Because if you're like me, I stand in front of the pantry. I know what I can cook. I know what we like to eat, but it's like my brain just stops functioning when it has to think up a meal. Um, so that's all you're doing here is just give me some basics like chicken breast. Okay. What can I do with the chicken breast? And it's going to spit out some good ideas for you to get started. And some of them are very basic, like hamburgers, uh, as you can see. But it's it's the start of how to meal plan, especially if you've not done it on a regular basis already. I think that this will help you to kind of branch out a tad. Now, you're going to see a lot of repeats, like hamburgers are back in the mix. What this site is doing is pulling from all of the big recipe sites um, based on ingredients. So you might even see the same recipe in there a couple of times. It's a free website. We're really not going to complain at it, but it's a really good resource when you're trying to meal plan off of ingredients. So again, the URL for this one is just supercook.com. Um, so hopefully you can find that and not, um, not have a hard time remembering it, but the recipes are usually all very easy to go through. Um, it's definitely sticking on the steak that I put in there and the beef in there, uh, and all of these ideas, but I think you will at least get a good feel for it. I, you could even plug in veggies if you wanted to from other thing that, things that are in the ad. You can also set up your own account here. So if you wanted to, you could go really huge and put in all the ingredients that you have in your pantry. Um, just keep in mind, really, that this one is almost the opposite. So the more ingredients you add, the more recipes are going to show up at the top. Um, so it's just to kind of think about as you go through um, – less is probably better as you ponder this. Um, most of them are already pretty simple and things that you would be able to cook anyway, but that is a good resource. Um, so another option, if you want, is to go ahead and sit down. Um, I think it's kind of like a crafty, more fun way to look at it, but go ahead and sit down and make a list of what you currently regularly cook. So do you have meals that the whole family loves? So for us, that would be Lipton onion soup burgers. Um, and we just have probably 10 that we rotate through on a very regular basis. So make that list and you can actually just cut them out into strips and we can create a jar basically of our common recipes that everybody loves. And if I'm trying to sit down and create a meal plan, I can just pull from the jar randomly, even to cover a month if I wanted to. It just depends on how many things are in your jar. But that's a fun way to mix it up and not feel like you're always eating the same thing every Monday um, to kind of add a little variety because it's based on when you pull it from the jar, but can kind of help you to think too. Because even though we have our set meals that we go through, sometimes your brain isn't even wanting to process what those are when you're super tired and trying to figure out what dinner is. Um, that can be kind of the basics. So for me, when I'm sitting down and making our meal plan, which is just me writing it out on a sheet of paper, um, usually every Sunday, then I'm basically doing that same thing. I'm looking at, okay, well, what did we eat last week? 
uh, so that we're not eating the exact same thing this week. And then what are our favorites that we can add in? What do I have in the freezer that maybe I double cooked on in the past that could help for a quick night? Uh, and, and then going from there and filling in. I also tend to only add in one maybe new recipe uh, a week, if that. Uh, but I have small kids. So to add in a bunch, there's no telling that they're going to eat it. Um, but it's just not not a wise decision around here. So we tend to stick with our routines and we probably rotate out. Uh, I would say we have uh, between a good 12 and 15 meals. So we're really looking at almost three weeks at that point when you add in, we had cross country practice. So we all ate sandwiches, you know, whatever. Uh, we all have those off nights, but when we start to add in those meals, it's enough to easily stretch us to that three week mark. Okay, let me pause and grab some um, questions, definitely, as we go through. Um, how good does already cooked potato freeze? So, Wendy, we put mashed potatoes um, in, uh, uh, my words are gone, like shepherd's pie, on top of shepherd's pie, straight in the freezer, and they'll taste great when they come back out. Um, now they are part of a casserole, so I can't say that I'm just going to eat them you know, straight, but I will say that the um, Simply Potatoes, mashed potatoes, they're buy one, get one right now in Publix, uh, those come out of the freezer. So they are not fully refrigerated. Publix actually puts them out frozen and they kind of thaw while they're in the store. They'll even keep some in the freezer. So uh, if that's how the brand is selling them, they're probably just fine. And those are real potatoes as well, though. You know, some of us are mashed potato snobs. I like little chunks of potato. I'm uh, So if you're in my boat, I like to make them fresh. But um, they do. They freeze just fine. And actually, uncooked potato will as well. There's a recipe that we've done in the past. I, I should have found the link earlier, and I didn't. Um, but we posted probably six freezer meals, and I did a YouTube video of them. This was a few years ago. Uh, and one of those was corn and potato chowder. All we did was take potatoes fresh, cut them up, and put them in a Ziploc container um, with the corn in there uh, and butter. And I think maybe the salt was even in there too. Some, one other, a couple other things go in and it just gets frozen like that. You haven't done anything to it, but it's ready to pour into the crock pot. And they were great. They were great for months. So um, I wouldn't be too afraid of freezing potatoes for sure. Um, okay. So to, I'm going to jump back up because that, that one was at the bottom of the comments. Uh, how long can you put the disposable pans in the freezer for? For us, I try to eat them within two months. I do not really want to leave it in there too long because the tops don't seal. And honestly, I would just say you could just throw away the tops. Um, occasionally, I will put the top on it just to preserve it. But the top, I, it's going to make a lot of noise here. Um, but just to kind of show you in the freezer, it's not really a reasonable, um, it's not a reasonable thing because look at all the air space. I can't put anything on top of that. It's just taking up too much space in the freezer. So for us, this usually gets chunked. It doesn't get used. And then we cover the top with press and seal and then on top of that aluminum foil so that it has two layers. I would even uh, consider taking your aluminum foil around and underneath just to really, really seal off as much as you can. And then on the top, on top of your aluminum foil, whether you do it in a sticker or you just hand write it with a Sharpie marker, you need to fully put the instructions for what it is, but how to finish cooking it. Um, because nine times out of 10, this is the go-to meal for mama is going out tonight and you are in charge of dinner. So make sure that they can make that happen uh, because it's pretty sweet to have that night off. Um, so it also saves you the frustration of having to look the recipe back up. So uh, the degree that it needs to be cooked at, how long, you know, all of that. Do I need to add cheese to the top? Whatever it might be. So add that to the top um, before it goes in and then ditch that plastic top. You're not going to want it in the freezer at all. Um, let's see. Uh, Lynn, yes. So Chobani for me at Publix, the coupons did not scan either. So uh, I think a lot of folks, Chobani has a really hard time coding their coupons in the first place. They put out free ones in the past. None of those worked either. Uh, that's just how they tend to work for some reason. Um, let's see. Have I ever had, oh, this is another off topic, but have I ever had problems using the Sally Hansen nail care coupon at CVS? Um, I haven't, Jessica. I actually grabbed Sally Hansen a few weeks ago 
and all of the coupons worked just fine. Um, but I haven't, I haven't had any issues with it in my store. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry, Deanna, your recycling is, I have a lot of juice containers. I'll just send them to you. Um, but maybe you can get some more in between now and then um, for having those extra containers to stick in the freezer. And I, I did see in the comments, one person said, you know, Ziploc bags. If you don't have anything else, go Ziploc bags, fill them with water, anything to fill those spaces in your freezer. It's definitely going to help um, in terms of losing power in the next uh, few days for those. Just be a realist and accept that it's coming and you'll be happy if it doesn't. But be a realist is probably the best bet. So Paige asks, are there any deals on these food saver rolls or bags? Paige, there is a printable coupon along with the machines. There's a printable coupon for the bags. However, we do not normally buy the name brand bags. Um, and I want to say this one is because there was a deal. So yes, I will confess this guy is name brand. Um, but normally for us, we tend to grab the really big rolls that are on Amazon uh, and they are no name brands, but they all have great reviews. So folks always ask, which one is it? Uh, there are a lot that are there. I would really just look at the reviews that, that folks have given it and then look at the price. But price wise for us, you're going to get a roll that's almost three times this size for the no name brand and is going to be the same price. So that's pretty huge. Uh, when you're looking at one roll with Food Saver might cost you six bucks. If I can get one that's three times this size around that same mark, we're doing pretty good. So uh, that's what I would recommend, Paige, uh, versus going name brand. Um, oh, and yeah, and Jolene's asking what, what brand in particular. So, I mean, it really for me is whatever one happens to be the, the least expensive right now on Amazon and has good reviews. Always looking at the reviews on those no name brands because I don't want to you know, you don't want to waste money uh, in that they didn't work because then you just wasted a lot of money having to throw away the food. Um, could I vacuum seal the disposable pans? I don't think you're going to find a roll that is wide enough to be able to do this pan um, because most of them, the, the full width is 11 inches. That's what the machine can handle. Um, so to go and be able to get that pan, I don't think you'd be able to do that, but it would be pretty sweet if you could. I just don't think that you could. Um, okay, so, um, oh, thank, I'm glad. So Aaron says Super Cook is amazing. We have another vote for it. It's definitely a really big help as you get started. Um, so I meal plan every Sunday. Um, or Jolene's asking, do I do it every Sunday or every Tuesday? So Jolene, I do not meal plan based on the sale. And this is where I would encourage you guys to get as well. Um, I actually did a tour of my pantry a few months ago, so you can pop on Facebook and see that. But for me, the goal is to buy the items when they're on sale, buy enough of them to last until they're back on sale. And once you do that, my pantry is the grocery store. So I don't need to meal plan based off of this week's sale at Publix. I can meal plan based off of the pantry. Um, so not necessarily focused on the sale, which is pretty sweet because sometimes you get stuck in a really big rut like Cinco de Mayo. You're going to have Mexican food all week that week. It's a really hard week to, to plan based on sales. Um, I don't have to do that. So I meal plan on Sundays based on what's ahead of us this week. Do we have a cross country meet? This is basically our life right now. Having kids that are for the first time ever doing sports. I know, are we, uh, do I have a workshop? Am I going to be gone one night? So my husband's in charge of dinner. Thank you, freezer meals. Um, you know, all of that gets factored in on Sunday. It's also helpful because you're kind of looking at your week and what's coming ahead anyway. Um, but I go ahead and map out the meals then. Um, you could sit down on Tuesdays as well if you wanted to. Uh, I have been actually ahead the last few weeks and the public stat has been up every Sunday. So if you wanted to, you could sit down on Sunday with me looking at that new public stat. It just depends on what day kind of works for you. Um, let's see. Directions on the package of those pre-made says to to not to do not freeze. Um, so Jennifer, I don't know if I caught what the package is um, on that item. Oh, I got you uh, on the the mashed potatoes. Uh, they still come frozen out of the grocery store. So if you get one. Um, that they just put out, they are rock solid. So that's funny that you would say that that's what the package says. Um, let's see. Um, 
I have a problem coming up with meal ideas that my six-year-old twins and three-year-old will eat. Um, Michelle, I think we all struggle with that. So in terms of your kids, what I would focus on is maybe they don't always like uh, every single thing that you cook, but maybe giving them a vegetable that they love or um, some other side that they're happy with. In our house, you have to eat um, some of what is given to you. So our kids hate squash and zucchini. I do not know why. Now, my three-year-old loves it, but nobody else will touch it. Um, but everybody still gets a few bites of it on their plate whenever squash and zucchini are on the menu that night. Uh, they they grumble, even the 13-year-olds, but it's good for you. It'll make you a better person uh, to muster through those foods. So trying to still give them something that, they'll, that they're content with that is on the plate, even though I know they may not be content with the other things, um, or something. We have one kid that does not like casseroles. So if it's mixed together, she is out. Um, and at the same time, that's dinner. So she will be the one that is sitting at the table 40 minutes later, trying her best to finish what is on her plate. And eventually she's probably going to give up. When she was younger, we did play the mean parent game. And it was casserole. So I had leftovers. Uh, and you're going to eat that for lunch tomorrow. Um, she thought it was the same piece. It was not the same piece. We gave her a new piece the next morning uh, for lunch, uh, and I think we may have even made her eat it for breakfast. But it was a you're not gonna you're not gonna get to kind of pull a card just to be difficult because that's kind of what she was doing at the time, um, and that's what we chose to do. And it did kind of put a stop to that one as well. Now that's uh, how much do you want to win that battle? I don't know. Um, but what I would do is if we find a meal that's working definitely add it to the list and, you know, try once a week throwing in something new, um, but sticking with the things that you know they'll eat. And that's just a phase of life. So we're not going to have fancy, fancy dinners here either. We know that you'll eat these meals. This is going to be the primary, what we're going to focus on for quite a while. And we'll add in new as you get older. Um, is it better to cook the whole meal before putting it in the freezer and then just reheat it? It's a great question, Paige. It really does depend on the meal that you're making. So, for example, uh, if I'm making a pot pie, I would actually recommend that you go ahead and pre-bake the pie just a little bit before it goes in the freezer because it's really hard to get the crust to fully bake when it comes out of the freezer and it thaws. It ends up getting that crust really, really moist, and you're going to wait ages for that crust to finish cooking where it never would have done that had we cooked it, you know, that day and then reheated or cooked it halfway and reheated. So pot pie, I would say yes. Shepherd's pie, no. Put it together and seal it up. Let's do the final bake when we're going to eat it. We don't want the mashed potatoes on the top to get really dried out. Uh, another one that we do regularly is poppy seed chicken. Uh, and that one also is, needs to be a final bake and not a pre-bake. And that is because of the cheese. So if you are making a casserole or a freezer meal, so you're going to do baked ziti, and it has cheese on the top or cheese in the middle, I would always recommend baking that last because cheese, when you freeze it, does change consistency. So to go ahead and cook it after it's been frozen, it's going to make it much more palatable. It's going to taste right, really. You're not going to have issues with it as long as you cook it after the fact versus cooking it before it goes in. And the cheese is the primary one uh, in that chicken poppy seed casserole that would tell me to let, let's just push this off and freeze it later, or sorry, cook it later rather than cooking it before it goes in the freezer. Um, so uh, Elizabeth asks, and this is gonna be a question um, for you guys. Thankfully, Judith, you've already chimed in. The fryerless fryer, is it worth getting? So I don't have one. Uh, I am not a huge fan of lots and lots of kitchen appliances. Um, we do have an Instapot, and I do have a rice cooker, but that's probably it. Everything else for us is pretty traditional um, beyond those two kind of, I guess, newer uh, devices. I don't have an air fryer, but Judith loves hers. So if anyone else wants to chime in, I'm curious uh, what you guys think too, but um, it isn't one of the things in our kitchen. Um, Let's see. Oh, sweet. Nadine says, off topic, but I got uh, my first 100% savings at CVS and only had to pay tax. That is a fun day, and it's probably going to add to your addiction just slightly, um, but 
you know, it's not a bad thing to be addicted to getting free stuff at CVS. It's a good thing. Um, in terms of the air fryers, we have seen them on sale lately, actually. And the off brands, we saw one this week for less than 40 bucks. Uh, I'm not sure in terms of quality on that because I don't own one. Um, but we are seeing some good deals. Kohl's had one on sale as well as part of their Epic sale. So you could check Kohl's and see. I know Kohl's sent me a text message uh, earlier today. Let's see how long it was good for, for an extra 20% off flash sale. Um yeah, until midnight tonight. So you could, um, the code is super easy, FLASH20, uh, all capital letters. So if you wanted to check out Kohl's and see if they had an air fryer on sale as part of their epic sale um, that's running through tonight, and then use that FLASH20 with it, you're going to get another 20% off whatever that price is. So possible deal for you there if you're wanting an air fryer. I'm not sure, though. I haven't I, I haven't checked to see what the prices were this second. Um, okay. Uh, so if I understand um, what you're saying, I'm making lasagna as I'm planning to do. I should just put the lasagna together and cook after freezing. Yes, exactly. Uh, another one with lasagna as well is that you could make it with the no-bake noodles and even freeze that uh, and you're good to go. So that makes it even more simple. Yes, so it's super easy to do. Now lasagna works okay being refrozen after it's baked, but it's going to get really uh, liquidy and you've already cooked it. So you're not gonna have time to get all that liquid out. Uh, I would recommend with any pastas going al dente on your noodles so they've got a little bit more crunch to them because that sauce is gonna have, it's gonna separate in its liquid a little bit. You are gonna have that extra water uh, that remains in the sauce and that's just gonna get soaked up by your noodles as they finish cooking. Uh, it's gonna make it, it's gonna make you much happier if you leave your pasta in any casserole with pasta in it slightly on that al dente, slight, slight not fully cooked um, so that by the time I finish baking it, it's perfect, especially when it comes out of the freezer. Um, uh, Aaron, off topic, way past left field, when I make a purchase off CVS, do I still get the extra care box? No. So CVS does not do extra care box on their online purchases. Rite Aid does, Walgreens does, CVS does not. So kind of a bummer. Um, but don't want to go there. You want to go ahead and um, get them in this store. Okay. Uh, in terms of other types of freezer cooking, so I see Jonathan asking about pre-cooking meats. Um, that is a whole other side that I think everybody should do. So even in terms of meal planning, guys, you know, if one of your struggles is, um, you know, I don't have time to cook every night or just the idea of that is stressful, then not freezer cooking or even meal plan cooking, um, but meal prepping. And that is something that we could all do so easily. So if you grab, uh, you know, spend an hour if that's what it takes. But if I've got onions that are about to go bad, chopping these up and putting them diced in a bag in the freezer, just go Ziploc bag here. Keep them in your inside freezer because, um, yes, I do have an outside freezer. Freezer cooking and sticking this in my inside freezer isn't going to work. Um, but having this in a bag, diced and ready to go for recipes, having ground beef already cooked in a bag, ready to go, um, chicken that is cooked and shredded, frozen. Uh, and another one on that, if you don't want to deal with the chicken, is getting like this week uh, or starting this Wednesday at Publix, the new Publix ad. Purdue shortcuts, which are the already cooked, already sliced chicken, is buy one, get one. And we've got coupons for it. So if you don't even want to deal with cooking the chicken, getting that and putting that bag straight in the freezer, um, you're set. You've got chicken uh, already ready to go for some basic meals. Um, so ground beef, ground sausage, uh, shredded chicken or diced chicken, uh, and having onions and green peppers. Green peppers are crazy crazy expensive, especially when they're off season. And you'll have a recipe that calls for just a tiny little bit of them. But if you've got them in your freezer already, that is not going to be a, a difficulty for you at all. Um, so anytime your produce is getting uh, near date, and for us, we do, we get, you know, our huge produce basket, rather than losing those items because I didn't get them up, as soon as they start to kind of, they're, they're not looking so good, let's get them in the freezer uh, so that we can have them for another time. Uh, we do the same thing with things that come out of the garden as well. A lot of times they just go straight in the freezer. And if we want them tomorrow, we can get them back out of the freezer. But we don't tend to hold on to them in the fridge because then you forget to eat them and they, they do go bad. 
But all of that is a huge help because then when I want to make a recipe, I don't have to get out and cook a whole bunch of ground beef. I've already got some. One of those being, um, and you know, those of you who've watched our meal plans for a while when I share them, uh, we have make your own pizza night a lot on Friday nights and our kids love it. Um, anytime they can cook a meal, they tend to want to eat it. So anyone that has issues, and I can't remember what your name was now as you were talking about uh, having a hard time with meals they want to eat, get them involved because as soon as they start to cook this meal, they're on board. It could be the meal they hated last week, but they help cook it this week. And so now it's just magically better. Um, that's what make your own pizza night is. So that ground beef that's already in the freezer and the ground sausage that's already in the freezer, I don't have to go and cook a whole bunch of beef just to have a tiny little bit to go on top of a pizza. And it makes make your own pizza night so much easier. We can pull out that frozen green bell pepper and frozen onions and frozen hamburger and it's all going on the top of the pizza without having to do any work. You know, no uh, cutting board was required on this night because everything was already ready to go in the freezer in a bag. So while it isn't freezer cooking in a sense, it's freezer prepping, it is a huge help to sticking with your meal plan for sure. So always recommend that. Um, okay, can you freeze all produce or are there some that don't freeze so well? Paige, this is a Google question. I tend to fit in the category that you can freeze it all. Um, I, fruit is a tricky one. It isn't going to be something that you're going to want to eat raw, but fruit can be frozen and always put into a smoothie. In terms of vegetables, um, there's not really anything that we won't freeze around here. I, I will use my vacuum sealer for most of it, and almost every vegetable is going to need to be blanched before it goes into the freezer. Uh, and that's a Google question as well. How long do I need to blanch? Because every single one of them is different. If you've never blanched vegetables, if, I, you know, if I'm throwing that out there and that's a word that you've never heard of, this really just means that I take vegetables, I put them in a pot of boiling water, usually for like 20 to 30 seconds max, and then I take them immediately out of the boiling water and put them into a bowl of ice. So, um, you know, you, and this is all we're doing. So grab your mixing bowl, fill it with ice, and we're going to put that broccoli that we just blanched right on top of the ice. So I want to cool it fast. I'm not trying to cook it. I'm trying to blanch it. And the reason to do that is that you are saving uh, a lot of the uh, nutrients that are in that broccoli. You're keeping it and kind of stopping it from um, growing and keeping it from breaking down in the freezer. So 99% of your vegetables need to be blanched before they're put up. And Google's going to walk you through it. So... How long do I blanch corn? How long do I run? You know, they have the answers to not everything in life, but everything that's related to freezing vegetables for sure. Um, and yes, almost every single thing is going to be good. Um, so Rose is saying that her best friend preps all the meals for Sunday, puts the soups in the crock pot, casseroles. I think that's amazing. Sundays for me are, I, I prefer a little bit more rest. I'm cool with meal planning, but I don't know that I can handle all my meal prep on that day. Um, but I'm definitely going to look ahead for whatever day I think is going to be crazy. And when I am planning out the meal, then that is going to be a crock pot day or a freezer meal day, um, just based on trying to reduce some of the stress around those crazy days, definitely. Um, oh, thanks, Anna. So that's a normal mixer. Um, I can't remember what side it's on now. And we just covered him um, in black spots using, um, uh, we have a silhouette machine. So you can get stickers for them too, but we did it ourselves just to be, uh, just to have some fun. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, to jump back in uh, on actual freezer cooking then. So we talked meal planning for a bit. If you jumped in late, one, recipe, one website that I did mention that I would recommend is Supercook. Uh, it's a great website for plugging in what ingredients you have and spitting out a lot of menu ideas. And I mean a lot, so you're going to need to look through it all, but it's at least to get your brain thinking. That's really the goal here. Um, I'm not a huge cookbook person. My kids are. I have one kid who would just read them all day long if I let her. Um, but cookbooks to me and meal planning are sometimes scary things to put together. Um, so if you're going to want to add a bunch of new things, it's probably going to cost a lot of money. And it's definitely going to take a lot more time to make sure that you have all the ingredients that those new recipes are going to require. So in terms of meal planning, only one of those a week is really a smart idea for most of us. You know, if, you, if you've got a lot on your plate, adding craziness to dinner 
isn't really a good idea. Um, so one new meal a week is a good idea. And then everything else being things that you know folks are going to eat and kind of rotating through your favorites. Um, so let's talk the freezer cooking side of things. Uh, we talked freezer prepping, which is the easiest every single person can do. And then the other one that we talked about was going ahead and pre-doubling a recipe. And what I mean by that is if I know that I'm making um, shepherd's pie, that I double every single thing that that recipe calls for so that when I'm done, I've made two shepherd's pies. Guys, your kitchen's already dirty, so why not? This is the easiest way to freeze your cook, and it is something that, I mean, every single one of us could already do. If you are making a casserole, nine times out of ten, that casserole can go straight in the freezer. Um, just double. Just make this a breeze for yourself and get one put up. Our favorite freezer meals are baked ziti, shepherd's pie, pot pie, poppy seed chicken, um, and beef stroganoff. Those are the most simple ones to do. Don't I don't put the noodles in for beef stroganoff. I just keep the bag like egg noodles and we add those later. But all the meat, all the sauce on top of it, ready to go. It's a simple, simple one. Um, another one that you can do for uh, kind of thinking ahead is sauces. So, um, at, you know, talking beef stroganoff, but if you've looked at the, like the Campbell's skillet sauces and the Campbell's slow cooker sauces that everyone's into. Um, you could really make those yourself and keep them in the freezer. So all I'm going to need to do beef stroganoff is a can of, of cream and mushroom soup and some sour cream and, you know, and a few spices and you're done. Um, so having those even put aside, is going to save you some time. If you just wanted to go very basic with your freezer cooking, um, and then sides. So I think when a lot of folks think of freezer cooking, they really do think of their meals. But I would say if you got in the habit of regularly grabbing whatever produce was on sale this week or doing a produce co-op, which is where we are, and then going ahead and freezing those vegetables in individual meal-sized um, vacuum seal bags, freezer bags, whatever you want. So let's not... Um, you know, take the whole head of broccoli and stick it all in one huge bag. But we really do want to do smaller bags. So think about your meal planning in the sense of how you're putting up your produce as well. So I'm putting it up in a individual meal-sized portion. And it's going to be just like your green giant, you know, steamers and your bird's eye steamers. That's the exact same concept. You're just doing that yourself as you put up your vegetables. Um, and if anything, you're saving yourself from not throwing away vegetables that went bad, but I see that they're about to go bad or we didn't eat them when they were super fresh, then let's get them frozen and put up right now. Uh, and they're going to be great. But meal-sized servings is key to doing that because it's going to make it so much easier for you to pull that out and run with it. You can even put salsas on them there. So if you want to pre-season that bag, just like Green Giant would, you can, and you're done. It's not that hard to put a lot of, or a little bit of effort into the extra part on that once you've already taken the time. Um, so Wendy, can you freeze sour cream? You can, it's gonna separate out. Um, so a lot of times what we will do is kind of know that that recipe calls for sour cream. If I know that I'm going to use it within a couple of weeks though, I will freeze the sour cream. It does fine if it's already in a casserole. So. Um, I don't worry about it at all in a chicken poppy seed casserole or anything like that. Not ever going to taste the difference on it. Um, the same with the beef stroganoff. Never had, never tasted a difference on it there either because you've got other flavors added into the mix. I think you're going to be okay. I would not, however, take a container of sour cream and stick it in the freezer. That is probably not going to taste so great when it comes out. Um, let's see. Um, oh, and so some folks are talking about how to keep the container bags open um, Wendy said, if you have a gallon pitcher, just flip the bag um, oh, so the mouth of the container holds it. And, this, uh, and if using a smaller bag, use a Pyrex measuring cup. Uh, I'm guessing that, uh, I'm trying to see what your answer was to that. Um, okay, so the, the stand, Wendy, that some folks will use too, you could really stick anything in there to hold that bag open. So what Wendy's talking about, I'm trying to see if I even have something that would work. Um, on our counter, but one in particular that I've seen folks do, um, I can never find it when I need it, and that's humorous. I can't even find it when I'm cooking. But if you have a mashed potato smasher, 
that's perfect. I just need a smasher that's got a wide bottom and it's going to stick right up there in the bag. They do make clamps that will hold one side of the bag open, but really all you're wanting is just something that holds it open as you start to put things in. Uh, anything will do that. A mason jar in the bottom of your bag that you then take out once you have some ingredients in there to hold it open. Um, but the potato smasher tends to work the best in my boat. You can even do a potato smasher with a uh, clothespin attached to it if you really want to hold it up without having to buy a bunch of different stands. Uh, most of the time when we freezer cook, we are not bag freezer cooking. Uh, we are more putting them in the pans or in the Ziploc containers because we're going ahead and putting up casseroles. But the bags are great if you want to just go ahead and put your meat. So let's say I bought my 40 pounds of chicken breasts and I want to go ahead and put some chicken breasts up with a marinade already on them. Um, that's pretty sweet and that's where a bag can come in handy. Um, go for it on that one. And then that's just having something to hold the bag open while you fill it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, how long does produce keep in the freezer? So Nicole, this is really a question based on how you froze it. Um, and that kind of goes back to vacuum seal versus Ziploc. So if you're going to vacuum seal your produce, it's going to be good in the freezer for um, that three to four month mark without a problem. If you are going to use Ziploc bags, never more than six weeks, ever. You will definitely not like the texture and the flavor eventually, but the texture is what's going to go first with Ziploc bags. So vacuum seal is the only way that we go with any produce, um, and that's been the case for us for a very long time. Um, but that's just a good rule of thumb. Six weeks or less can be ziploc Six weeks or more always needs to be vacuum sealed. Um, and let's see. Oh, freezing the container. Um, oh, in terms of freezing the container, um, we have done up to two months in a Ziploc container and been fine. But that's kind of at that eight-week mark. I wouldn't go past the eight-week mark um, in the Ziploc containers. And for me, these are usually um, crock pot meals that are not cooked. So they're the ingredients all put together, ready to dump into the crock pot. But I'm not going to put a bunch in here long term. I guess there is one thing that ends up in here, and that's soup. If we make a big pot of soup, we always try to save half. It's going to end up in one of these. Um, but again, not more than eight weeks because soup in the freezer, if you've ever put it up, um, please label it. But soup is that one item that gets stuck in your freezer because you look at it and you're like, I have no clue what's in there. Some kind of creamy thing that's taken over the container. You forget what the soup is. You forget what was in the soup. Um, so label it really well and never past eight weeks because then you're going to reach a point where you're like, I don't even want to figure out what's in there. I'm not brave enough. Um, so that's it for us. That's the only cooked meal that ever ends up in a Ziploc container. Um, let's see. Oh, where did I get the chicken poppy seed recipe? So, Sonia, um, it is a pretty basic one. I want to say it's from, like, the All Recipes site, but it is just super simple. Cream of mushroom or cream of chicken soup and sour cream mixed together to kind of make the filling around the chicken. Shredded chicken that's pre-cooked in the middle. More filling on the top. Um, cheese and then Ritz crackers with butter and poppy seeds. So that is one of the easiest ones. It's actually one of the first ones that my big girls learned how to cook themselves. So it's a, an, a very simple casserole. And we have it a lot because my girls like to cook it uh, and they like to feel like they can make dinner themselves. And I don't like to complain there. So if they want to cook dinner, we will gladly eat chicken poppy seed casserole without, a, without any complaints in this house. Um, do I have a list of our freezer cooking recipes? And if not, would that be possible? So Paige, I have some where we did it as a post. Uh, and I can put a link into those, but I can definitely list out. These are our favorite things to make and the links to the recipes for sure. Um, so uh, hopefully that will help. I mean, they're not, you know, fancy recipes, but we don't really cook anything fancy in our world. Uh, but hopefully that will definitely put it all in one place. Um, does lock and lock get freezer burn? I don't know what lock and lock is, Jonathan. So do you mean like the snap lock? Uh, so any container really is going to get freezer burn because of the oxygen that is still in that container. So I saw someone say you could use a straw and try to suck out, um, uh, you suck out the extra area. I mean, you can go that far, but that's the point of the vacuum sealer. It's not that this bag, you know, it's not that this is all that more wowing over a Ziploc bag. 
It's the fact that there's no oxygen in the bag with the product, or there's a, a lot less for sure. That is what's causing the freezer burn. So um, while these are probably a slightly thicker mill than a Ziploc bag, it's really the air. Um, and inside of a container, if you don't have a way to take out that air, then it is going to get freezer burn. They do make vacuum seal containers. Um, we, I think, own one. I have a vacuum sealer that has the suction to be able to go with a container. I have never used it. So we are just very basic with our vacuum sealer. We tend to only do the bags uh, and not really branch out into the other things for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, and Judith says you can no longer find freezer paper. That is a hard one, Judith. Now that I think about it, everyone's gone parchment paper. Um, I'm trying to think. Even Target had all of that stuff on sale last week, but I don't think I even saw freezer paper on the shelf. You have to go with Amazon, I guess, or somewhere online if you wanted to grab it. Um, is there any way to find a price on something at Publix at a given time without going to the store? Um, so when Publix does not have an online lookup, um, so if you're wanting something that isn't necessarily in the weekly ad, you just kind of want to know what is the current price for this, uh, what you could use is Instacart. Don't use Shipped. You won't be able to see any prices on Shipped. But you could pull up Instacart. You'll have to create an account, but it's free as long as you don't order anything. Uh, and with Instacart, you can plug in something that you're curious on finding out a price. And then keep in mind that they raise prices about 25 to 30 cents per item. So if I kind of take that away, it's going to give me a general ballpark of what that price is in public. So that, that's an option if you really wanted to know what something was priced right now. Another option would be that you could use the item search on Southern Savers and look up a past date. Uh, anytime you see a buy one, get one price, that's the full price before it's cut in half. So if all I did was find when that item was last buy one, get one, I'm going to have a really good idea of what the, the full price is for it um, any other day of the week. So either way that you wanted to. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, do I ever teach classes in Alabama? Sonia, I'm always up for going wherever folks want me to come. Uh, lately, I've been in South Carolina a lot. I know I, I just put up a class yesterday in Hickory, North Carolina. So anyone that's in the Hickory area, I'll be there in a couple of weeks. Um, but always glad to go anywhere. So if you've got an idea, you can send me an email or send me a Facebook message. It's probably even easier. Uh, and we can try to set something up. Um, so someone asked about our pizza dough. Um, with our pizza dough... We, Cindy, we do a, um, a no-rise pizza dough. I've shared the link a few times in our meal plans in the past. Um, and it's one that just takes a, a few minutes to throw together. We do have a recipe for a rising pizza dough, but you have got to be very on it to start that pizza dough at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon so that you are good to eat it at 6 o'clock at night. Um, but that is our go-to. Uh, another one that we will use is uh, a bagged pizza dough that is Bob's Red Mill gluten-free pizza dough um, because we have that in our family too. So, um, But the no rise is the super simple uh, or whenever we walk a pizza dough is buy one get one. Um, this is a Lowe's Foods and a Harris Teeter deal, especially anyone that has either of those two stores. We walk a pizza dough. Uh, we'll go buy one get one on a pretty regular basis in both of those stores. They have a 75 cent coupon that doubles and it makes for crazy cheap, 14 cent pizza dough in the end. We will gladly use some of that as well. You know, I'm never opposed to what's on sale, but if nothing's been on sale, then it's the no rise pizza dough. You could probably Google and find a very similar recipe, um, but it is in our past meal plans if you look through those on Southern Savers too. Uh, so Nicole asked, how long do diced onions and other items, because I'm not blanching these, that's a great question. These are getting cut and put straight in a bag and we use them in recipes. Um, for us, Nicole, we're constantly adding to that bag with, you know, we cut up an onion or maybe we used half an onion to make sandwiches, but we didn't use the other half. The other half's going to get diced and put in that bag in the freezer. Um, so it kind of just lives in there permanently, but I feel like the onions are constantly getting rotated through. So um, if you were going to keep them in there without blanching them, I really wouldn't go past a month and that might even be pushing it. Um, but if you're going to blanch them, they could last a little longer just probably a month would be my max if I wasn't going to touch the onions. For us, this gets pulled out for so many meals, uh, even down to we're going to make omelets uh, in the morning. This is great to go in those. So uh, diced onions is a 
an all the time used item around here. Um, uh, we walk a pizza dough. Nicole is in the dairy section. It is right near Pillsbury Rolls. Um, so if you've got if you're in the freezer, freezer ugh, the freezer section, you're never going to find it. So go straight for Pillsbury Rolls. For me and Lowe's Foods, it's right there on the bottom shelf in my store. I don't know if that'll help you, but that's where I would check first. Always the dairy refrigerated section. And we walk a can be frozen. So um, just stick it straight in the freezer if you don't know when you're going to use it. And you don't even have to worry about uh, how long has it been there or, you know, did we miss the mark on that one? So is there a food staple item that I don't coupon for? I don't think so. This makes me ponder. Um, I feel like everything that we eat, Wendy, comes on sale at some point. So we're not left with having to, uh, you know, I may not have a coupon for it, but I'm not left with having to pay full price for it either. Um, like, yeah, I'm trying to think of even our, our ingredient items. So we use Lipton onion soup mix a lot. I use... Um, like around me, uh, so behind me is very clean, but in front of me is not so clean. So, you know, I, I use this guy, um, white wine vinegar. This goes in our roasts every week. We use it in other items as well, but even this will go half price. doesn't mean I always have a coupon for this, but it'll still go on sale. So, uh, that's really the goal is just grabbing the ingredients you need when they're on sale. And it's going to save you a chunk to do that. Um, okay. Um, Oh, yeah. So uh, Calliope is saying, you know, in terms of uh, knowing where your freezer is, that she'd read to fill a Ziploc bag with water and freeze it with a quarter in it. And if the quarter is not at the top anymore, then your freezer got too hot for safety. That is another one that a lot of folks will do is putting it in a cup with the quarter on the top. Um, and then, you know, if it, if it sank down into the middle by the time it refroze, that you have problems. Um, so one option here, too, if you're really worried about power, you're worried about your freezer not working, uh, if you do lose power and we and you start to get into that everything's thawing, then you need to go into let's cook everything mode. Um, because if I can go ahead and let's let it thaw and then let's cook it. Let's turn it into shredded chicken and diced chicken and ground beef. And then we can actually refreeze it now that we've fully cooked it. Hopefully the power is back on uh, and we can stick it into the freezer. So we had this joy um, probably like two or three months ago on a Sunday morning, woke up to find that the freezer door had been left open. We're not going to name names, but it was someone who was, who was very little, uh, had left the freezer door open and first three shelves were definitely had to be cooked right now. A chunk got, had to get thrown away, but we cooked a ton of chicken, uh, a ton of ground beef that day. We made like five chicken pot pies. It, uh, and thankfully we had church lunch that day. So we brought a lot of food to church lunch. Um, but you know, the first thing you need to do before you start throwing things away though, is are there items that we could fully cook right now as if we had just treated them, you know, as long as they're still, still cold, um, that we've just treated it like we thought at first, let's cook it. Uh, and then let's keep it cold. Let's try to refreeze it. You know, um, uh, if the power is back on for sure. Okay, um, we, I, I don't know if we hit everything that I, I wanted to hit tonight. I hope that I've gotten through most of y'all's questions. Um, let's see. Oh, and my husband just shared a link. Thank you of the Powers Out recipes. So some easy ones to go ahead and kind of cook up uh, if you've hit that point and you need to use up some things that are in the freezer uh, and to handle that too. Um, but hopefully that, that helps for you guys. Um, yes. We definitely used up those meatballs that day, Erin. Um, that, that's just life. It happens to everybody. Um, since then, we now use the locks on our freezer. Uh, I don't know if your freezers have locks, but that is now our backup. So if a kid gets something out of the freezer, they know to relock the door. And the little lock hangs right there. We're not trying to keep people out. We're just trying to make sure the door is shut. Um, but then we won't lose any food uh, by making sure that that lock is set every single time that you close the freezer door. Okay, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and pop off there. I am still going to be shopping on Wednesday. I don't think we're going to have any issues, so I'll share the deals that we grabbed on Wednesday um, and any deals that you can grab. There are some really good deals this week. We didn't even get to, you know, nobody had a lot of off-topic questions today, but there's three simple, simple freebies at CVS, um, and Walgreens, again this week, guys, is running that bonus. 
in the front page of their ad. So buy $25 worth of stuff at Walgreens, you're going to get another 5,000 bonus points. I am going to Walgreens this week and actually wasn't not planning on getting any deals at Walgreens except for almonds. So you're talking about, you know, do I coupon for things that are, are staple items? Almonds is a big staple item right now with uh, my husband being keto or doing keto. I don't know, what, however you word that. So Walgreens has a crazy good deal on Blue Diamond almonds. Uh, a pound bag after coupons is $4.99. Guys, that's really like 10 bucks in the grocery store. So going in for Blue Diamond almonds, getting $25 worth, uh, and then getting the 5,000 bonus points on top of it. It's also going to help me use up a lot of points that I already have um, to pair that in. So just to kind of, you know, throw that one out there. If you're trying to grab some things, don't miss the bonus point opportunity on that front page of Walgreens. Um, so hopefully you guys can get some of those deals. The Publix ad is already up. Kroger ad I'm almost finished with. We'll have that up in a second. Um, but, uh, you know, the deals are always coming. That's the fun of it all. So I'll share what we grab on Wednesday. If you've got any questions, feel free to send me a Facebook message. And if you have any ideas of what we, if you want us to talk about on future Q and A's, just ask that too. Um, so always here to help. Thanks for joining me guys. Y'all have a great night.